Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the homestead. Yeah. It's a beautiful morning in late October. It's actually really warm today. I'll probably be shedding this hoodie and this hat here in a bit. But, uh, oh, I thought I'd do a little vlog today. I'm just about to head out to uh, a cutting site which is a particular interest. <coughs> and the reason I like this place is because um, uh, not only is it really easy to, to cut the wood, there's access to um, the trees that I'm cutting. I can, I can drive up to most of them and I'll have to pack the wood out, which really saves a lot of time. And uh, second, the dude is a collector. Like, I don't know how much money he's got, but he's got a lot of money, and it's a lot of it is tied up in old Mopars. Dude has the largest collection of Mopars that I've ever seen. He's probably got at least a hundred of them. Now, they're not all in running shape like Jay Leno's Garage or something like that, but um, he is a serious collector of Mopars. He's got some other stuff too, some old Buicks and some old Chevys and, and stuff like that. But for the most part, like 99% of everything he's got is old Dodges, Plymouths, stuff like that. And he's really got a pretty cool collection of stuff. So um, he's shown me a few things, but I just like driving through uh, to check out his spot. So I'll show you guys a few of the things he's got since I'll be traveling through there. I have to drive through his yard to get to where I'm going to cut. So y'all will get to check it out. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go get my truck out of here. I'm going to open the gate real quick. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, and off we are. Brown truck is running good so far. I put about 2,000 miles on this uh, old beast since the uh, engine transplant operation. Um, aside from the minor leak in the rear main seal, it's running pretty good. Not really leaking much oil. In fact, it could be transmission fluid because I am leaking transmission fluid, or I'm or I'm burning it. I believe I'm burning it and leaking it both, and I may have to. <coughs> deal with the transmission sometime in the next year um, it shifts fine everything's good but it you know it's leaking it's fucking leaking fluid or using it and I think it's the uh, the vacuum shift solenoid or whatever whatever that thing is uh, I don't know the fucking vacuum diaphragm actuator that is basically the kick down for um, from third to second gear so when you hammer the gas it detects the change in intake manifold pressure and downshifts to second gear. And I think there's transmission fluid getting siphoned up that vacuum line into the intake uh, when the truck is off. So there could be a seal or a check valve or something that's not quite working properly. I don't really understand how it works because I've never worked on it. But that's just something that's going on. And I've got to put about a quart or two quarts of ATF in this truck every thousand miles or so. So it's going somewhere. But it's not dripping out. You know, I don't see leaks underneath the truck. I don't see drip points. I mean, I can, I can pick up fine sprays. So I, I would imagine that my input shaft seal leaks a little bit. And, you know, that... You know, it's it's thrown everywhere by the torque converter. So I think that's kind of what I'm seeing, but I'm not quite sure. It might be a little bit of both. A little bit of rear main seal, a little bit of input shaft seal on the on the on the transmission, and that's just mixing together and making a mess. So anyway, <clears throat> we are here. This is his spot. And he's got a lot of cool cars. This is this is nice stuff, obviously. And when I say he's a collector, I don't mean just Dodges. 
check out these antique wagons. I know my window is dirty as fuck and you can't see that well, but but you can kind of get the gist here. I mean, this dude's got some cool fucking cars. And this isn't even this isn't even an eighth of what he's got. This is the nice stuff. This is the stuff he's actively working on right now. And there's just there's some really really cool cars here, dude. Over here we got this side. This is the Buick I was talking about right there. That is a badass fucking Buick right there. I would not mind having that. Fuck yeah. And uh, he's a really cool dude. So here we are. This is my uh, cut site. This is where I've been working this year. really pretty in here and every time I come out it gets a little bit better hold up I gotta unlock the gate it takes two hands <sighs> big ass fucking chain holding that fucker shut I'm in the habit of keeping this gate closed because he occasionally has cow grazing in here so at any given time there might be some cows running around in here so I just always keep the gate closed Isn't that pretty? Starting to look pretty good with all the deciduous trees are starting to change colors down at this elevation. The ones uh, in my last video up on top there, those were about eight, nine, ten thousand feet. And uh, those are all gone now. They're all blown off. We had a really strong windstorm the other night. And that pretty much ended the uh, mountain colors right there. It was whipping up there for at least a day. So I've already pretty much hit this place up. A lot of it's already been cut. There's that tree right there, which I might might do that one today actually because, well, it's not quite dead yet. That's the only reason I haven't quite cut it down yet. There's still, there's still a decent amount of foliage on that tree. too many leaves around it before from that uh, choke cherry bush that red bush right there with the red and orange leaves is choke cherry I think what do I know I'm not a fucking biologist I call it choke cherry because <laughs> it chokes out the cedar trees and uh, they die I don't know how they, they just they just don't do well and I see a lot of dead cedar trees that are choked out by choke cherry there's a bunch of good trees back in there, but I can't get my truck that way. It's blocked off by rocks. There's another way to get in there, and I'm gonna try to get in there today doing that. But first, I'm gonna go gather up the wood that I already have cut. There's one right there, but I'll get him on the way back. It's just one piece. He fell out the last time I was hauling the load out of here. But I've got some shit up here this little plateau area. You can see that one I cut out right there directly in front of the camera. There's a huge choke, choke cherry bush in front of it and it was completely dead. Big tree too. So, got the four wheel drive kicked in because we got some boulders to uh, negotiate here. But I've got a pile of wood down there at the end of this uh, little gully here. Yes, you call it a gully. Oh, but there's some rocks here. I can't. I can't get around those. Okay. It's that motherfucker that I was worried about. These little lava rocks are scattered everywhere out here. 
can we say mud flood? <laughs> There's definitely something to be said about that shit. You know, I've been following some of these uh, these theories about uh, cataclysms and stuff on our planet, and like there was a huge flood, basically. You know, if you listen to any of the Joe Rogan podcasts, they talk about this all the time. Um, about how there was a massive flood event, the Great Flood, whatever. But here in North America, caused by a comet, and it caused the ice to melt all at once, and basically the water just came down all at once and washed the land away. And this is kind of the what you see. All these boulders are lava rock. And they're just buried and scattered everywhere. Probably, I don't know how deep it goes. Maybe not that deep. Because then you hit another sedimentary layer of sandstone. And there's a coal vein under us too. A lot of that stuff. Alright, here I am at the first spot. There's not very much wood here. There's only one tree. But this is kind of how I have to get the cedar. Is uh, one piece at a time. There is this chunk here. I didn't cut it up last time because I didn't want to fire up the big saw. But I'm going to go ahead and fire up the big saw today. But first I'm going to load this little bundle right here. Alright. It's looking a lot better around here. This part of the field is visible from the road. So it's important to make it look clean before I go back into the brush back there. There's a lot more cutting back there. Hello, what do we got here? I see an orange foliage ahead. I'm gonna have to take a look at that. That might be a pinion pine. And I need to get some pinion pine. Not today, but eventually. So, my implements of destruction today, and my three echoes. I don't have my big echo here, or, well, I actually do. The 670 is the largest one, but the, uh, the 620P, I typically don't bring out to cut cedar. Um, reason being is cedar is just super dirty. I mean, it's super dirty wood. This bark, just, it's just so dusty. Look at all the dust that comes off of that. So when you're in there chainsawing, I mean, it just has a tendency to collect, you know, a lot of crap. And a full chisel chain will not last very long cutting this stuff, unless you take the time to remove the bark, which is very impractical. So I use mostly semi-chisel chains. As you can see, each of these saws has a rounded tooth right here. See, round, round. This saw here is not only round, but it's 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 uh, cut at 10 degrees instead of 30. So this is actually a milling chain on here. And uh, this is why I like it, because I can cut pretty much at any angle. Um, and the cedar is just really weird. Like this one over here, is going to be like that when I cut those root balls apart um, this saw is going to be a lot more forgiving with this chain on it right here so they're all they're all semi chisel which is better for dirty crappy cedar like the it's not crappy wood by any means I you know it's great firewood which is why I'm out here cutting it but um, it is hard on chainsaws if you don't know what you're doing so little tip semi chisel run all day on cedar wood So this old CS670 has turned out to be a pretty good saw for me. No complaints. Burned a few tanks of gas through it. No problems. Cuts great. It's fast and reliable. I love it. So awesome sauce.
That was pretty badass. One of the things I like about this saw is it's got a manual oiler on it. So when I was balls deep in that log right there, uh, chain was getting plenty of oil and you can see that it's hardly stretched out at all. If I had tried this with the 620 full chisel chain, that should be smoking right now. And it'd be dull as hell. It's just crazy how fast it, it, it dulls out. So, And uh, so I was able to cut up that whole thing. I'll be able to use it all for firewood. Uh, there's a couple pieces there I just need to split. Fortunately, I've got my implements of destruction for that as well. Which I'm really happy with lately. Um, actually, in here, I've got a couple of great tools. Which I would recommend for any professional firewood cutter is this eight pound maul from Fiskars here. This thing can pretty much tear apart anything. I may not even need it on this because I've also got its counterpart the Fiskars short handled splitting axe. So usually I like to use this because you know I can swing it a lot faster with a lot less energy and uh, it works pretty damn good <coughs> now the only problem is is uh, I don't really have a splitting block so I really don't have to worry too much this ground is pretty soft so I hit I hit the ground with my axes and mauls all the time um, they just have to be sharpened occasionally and a lot of the stuff will split naturally anyway so some of these i'll have to flip them like that but let me just show you what this little fucking axe can do it's crazy pretty weird looking piece right there no problem probably even take that little piece of shit off right there too Cedar splits really easily, though, I have to admit. This is not difficult wood to split. Even as gnarly as it is. Missed. almost split this stuff with just a sledgehammer just pounding it it'll just crack and come apart especially the dry stuff like this that's pretty much it <laughs> like I said I didn't even need the big mall at all there comes the daily spy plane you hear them fuckers yep what are they doing? You getting filmed? That's what's going on. They're probably watching me too, fuckers. But yeah, I still got one left. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and load up. Yep. Well, uh, that's it. Saying goodbye to the Dodge Ranch for today. We'll be back. Got a quart of cedar in the back. Stopped recording because it got uh, a little cumbersome to uh, position the camera constantly and keep going. But uh, one of these days I'm going to do a video about this guy's cars, man. He's got a hell of a collection of vehicles. Of course, his favorite one to drive is right there. The old Rumble B Ram. Badass truck. Cool cars everywhere. <laughs> I don't know where he gets his money for him, but it's uh, it's cool to check him out. So anyway, 
until next time, we'll uh, catch you all later in the next video. Peace out.